In this video, we'll discuss the colors of stars, how astronomers can determine the temperature of stars, and uh, just a little bit on composition and what it tells us about stars, and um, looking at uh, absorption and emission lines, what it tells us about the universe. So it's difficult to see different colors of stars with your eye. You can get a little hint in looking at the constellation of Orion that Betelgeuse is a little bit reddish and Rigel is a little bit bluish. Uh, but if you use a telescope, you get much better uh, sensation of colors to your eye. Your eye needs a little bit more light than the stars uh, provided uh, without the aid of uh, a collector, like binoculars or a telescope. Um, so we'll get into uh, some of the studies that have been done with equipment and uh, uh, tools measuring the spectra that will give us an indication of color and will determine the uh, surface temperature of stars. This video will not go into velocity. Um, I've decided to break it into to two pieces. So here's a photograph with a telescope and you can scan across here and you can see stars of different colors. The red ones particularly stand out and there's some uh, blue ones in here as well. Do you have any kind of impression on which star would be hotter? The blue star or the red star? blue star or red star? If you're thinking back to the black body spectrum, that would be great. As we know in a black body, when the temperature goes up, the in the visible range of uh, wavelengths, we get more light at the blue and less at the red. When the temperature goes down, the peak of the black body spectrum shifts towards the red side of the visual uh, spectrum. And that's the case here as well. The red stars are cooler, the blue stars are hotter. So red is, is a cool star, blue star is a hot star. So that's an, an overall impression, but it's not very scientific. We can't put a number to it. But we can start doing so if we investigate the spectra. So again, the black body. There's a peak in this uh, black body spectrum, and this peak shifts towards the blue side when we have a temperature increase. And this gives us a little bit better clue than just our eyes, but not still not totally the the answer to uh, the number for the temperature. Um, so we'll get to that in just a minute. Let's imagine putting filters in uh, our optical system at the telescope, so we only let uh, certain colors of light come through. And there are two popular filters in uh, some basic astronomy work. That would be the blue filter and what's called the visual filter. The blue measures light in the blue wavelengths. The visual filter measures more at the peak of our visible spectrum, green and yellow, and lets that color of light through. So a filter lets certain wavelengths come through, lets a certain color come through. It blocks other colors. So the astronomers use that. So we let blue light come through and we get uh, a indication of the brightness in the blue part of the spectrum. And here again, the astronomers use the magnitude system for this, uh, this measurement. So it's a magnitude number. A more uh, uh, a brighter blue amount of energy will give us a more negative magnitude. Again, you have to kind of work with this and uh, remember that a brighter object has a more negative magnitude number. In the green and yellow band, same thing happens here. If we have more energy, the blue-green, or the visual magnitude number, will be more negative. So let's take a look at some, uh, some stars with this. Uh, so we can advance our slide here, hopefully. So here we see some different black body spectra as a, a change in temperature has occurred. And we're going to focus in on this slide on the 10,000K black body. This is a medium hot star. It's hotter than the sun. The sun is about 5,800 Kelvin. So here is 10,000 Kelvin. And I have uh, these bars here representing the brightness or the energy at the blue filter wavelengths and the green yellow wavelengths. So which one will have a more negative uh, magnitude? If we have more energy, that's a more negative magnitude. So if we do this calculation, B minus V, the B number is more negative than the V number, and it will dominate and will have a negative uh, value for B minus V. 
that there won't be much different than zero just slightly negative as we would get hotter and hotter stars it would become more and more negative till about the hottest star is about minus 0.3 so it's not a huge number uh, but uh, minus 0.3 would be the for the very hottest stars here we have a medium hot star 10,000 Kelvin and we just have a slightly negative B minus V number um, so hope you're getting the sense of this again the dimmer star that has a more positive uh, value for the the magnitude the uh, brighter object has a more negative magnitude so when we do this calculation we get a negative number but that's a 10,000 Kelvin object B minus V is a negative number now for a 3,000 Kelvin star this would be a reddish star and in this situation we're not getting as much blue as we used to it's dimmer now so this is now the high magnitude number a larger number and the green yellow is a brighter than the blue more energy at this particular wavelength so it's going to be a more negative uh, smaller uh, magnitude number so if we do this calculation B is a more positive number V is a smaller more negative number and the B minus V is a positive. So the overall scheme of this, if B minus V is negative, it's a hot object. If B minus V is positive, it's a cooler object. This uh, technique allows astronomers to quickly sample many hundreds of thousands of stars in the sky and obtain a temperature and do statistics with uh, this massive data but it's very easy at the telescope to quickly get these two numbers, the B and the V numbers, and then do the subtraction with a computer. And astronomers have access to a big body of knowledge of these B minus V values for stars, and thus an indication of the temperature of the star. The B minus V number is related to the temperature. B minus V is related to the temperature. Now, another way that astronomers could get the temperature, you know, this is this is good this is a good method um, a little less of a uh, accurate method is to find the peak of the spectrum and use what's called Wien's law Wien's law says that the wavelength of the peak of the spectrum is related to the temperature of, of a black body so that's another way of doing it so there are two methods and well, here's a graph of B minus V first so again high temperature here off to the right the B minus V uh, is zero, roughly around 10,000 Kelvin for the surface temperature. Again, the sun is a uh, about 5,800 Kelvin, so it's up here. Maybe it's uh, 0.68 for its B minus V. I, don't quote me on that, but it's a, a positive value. Um, okay, back to the spectra. So we have a continuous spectra from a hot source, uh, solid, liquid, dense gas. If we have a cool gas uh, in between the observer and the hot source, then we get an absorption spectrum. If we're just looking at the hot gas itself, then we get an emission spectrum. The brightness of these lines, or the darkness of the lines, uh, which lines are present or not present, astronomers can use this also for a very accurate way of determining the temperature of an object. So whether certain wavelengths of light are present or not for an atom, that does change based on the temperature where the uh, where the atoms located, um, and then of course we get the percent abundance of the uh, uh, material in the uh, source or whatever's causing the absorption, causing the emission, or uh, so forth, giving us these lines. We can determine what atoms, what elements make up the the object, and we can determine the percent abundance. Uh, based on how strong, how dark or bright the uh, the lines are. Uh, so that's important. Another way of determining temperature, what wavelengths are present or not present for the uh, the spectra for a particular element and how strong those, uh, uh, those lines are. Um, here's a, uh, a star spectrum, the more squiggly line, and then a black body spectrum laid on top of this. And again, these absorption lines created um, as the light is coming to us from the star. What's this tell you about the star, the makeup of the star, the structure of the star? If we pretty much see a continuous spectrum, and then we see these absorption lines embedded here. 
hopefully it tells you that there's a source of the continuous spectrum surrounded by a cooler gas and that's the way a star is built. A star is dense gas, very dense gas. It uh, emits a continuous spectrum, but the star has an atmosphere, an atmosphere that's thinner and cooler, at least in spots, uh, to produce the absorption lines. Um, so we get this structure for stars. They're dense on the inside, and they have a thin, cooler gas as an atmosphere around the outside that creates these absorption lines. Um, Another aspect to this is astronomers look at stars throughout the universe. If we account for the Doppler shift to determine the velocity and other aspects that can change the wavelengths of light, the expansion of the universe, um, if we account for those, then it turns out that, say, hydrogen, the emission and absorption lines occur at wavelengths for stars near us that are the same as the wavelengths for stars that are far from us, that is the same as stars in other galaxies, and even the same as galaxies and galaxies that are tremendously far away. This tells us that atoms are basically the same throughout the universe. We're getting the same wavelengths produced for atoms in our laboratories, atoms in stars near us, atoms in galaxies near us, atoms in galaxies far away. We're getting the same type of light produced. That tells us that those atoms are the same in other galaxies. Hydrogen exists in other galaxies with a proton and electron um, configuration, helium, so forth, carbon, with their arrangement of electrons. And we uh, know from the study of spectra that the atoms in the universe are basically the same. No, that's, that's an interesting piece of news. We know a little bit about the makeup of the universe. So in this, uh, in this particular video, we've talked about the color of stars. The hotter stars are more blue to the eye. The cooler stars are more reddish to the eye. Astronomers use filters to just gather blue light and measure its magnitude. Just gather the green-yellow light and measure its magnitude. They do a subtraction of those two magnitudes. If the B minus V is a negative number, the star is hot. If B minus V is a positive number, the star is cooler. And then the peak of the black body curve is another way to determine the temperature. Uh, the spectral lines, of course, give us elements and also indicate temperature um, by whether or not these lines are present and how strong the lines are, how either dark or bright they are. That gives us a clue as to the temperature that the gas and those atoms exist in. That's where we'll end this particular uh, video. Uh, read, ask your instructor questions.